A Mohawk artist living in Fort Covington, New York, is molding a niche for herself in clay, making pottery that now has a permanent home in places such as the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., museums in the states of New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and museums in the Canadian province of Ontario. The Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown, New York, owns some of her pieces and invited her to demonstrate pottery techniques as part of their Native American art series. Even though she excels at pottery, her creativity goes beyond it. The spotlight shines on the multi-talented Natasha Smoke Santiago. Artist Natasha Smoke Santiago uses smoke to create an antique look for her pots, which are fired with modern methods. I've always been an artist. My mom said I started painting when I was three years old, and it's always been something that I've, that's been a part of me that I love to do, that I'll always do. While she's made many paintings, it was her skills at pottery that attracted the attention of the Fenimore Art Museum. Curators there invited her to demonstrate pottery techniques as part of the museum's Native American art series. Smoke Santiago says she's always happy to share what she's learned about pottery. I learned the Mohawk style in the year 2000 um, here in Akwazasne. The, the class was throughout the summer. We took canoes to Yellow Island from St. Regis, we dug our own clay, we cleaned our own clay. It was a whole long process. It wasn't just like a weekend type of uh, class. We cleaned uh, the clay, we learned how to add uh, sand and different shells, ground shells to it. We learned how to do that. Um, we pit fired. So it was a whole long process throughout the summertime and that's when I picked it up in the year 2000. For eight years, the artist has taught pottery classes at an archaeological site in southwestern Quebec. And she's now teaching in her own community as well. Which is good because as far as I know, I'm the only Haudenosaunee Mohawk potter now in the area. My teacher, I guess he moved away. So um, I feel like now it's my responsibility to teach it, carry it on. Um, if there's anybody who wants to know, you know, I'm the person to go to, and um, I feel good about that. Uh, even with our, our tobacco pipes, you don't see those anymore, hardly at all. And they're still needed for our, some of our ceremonies. Um, so now people are starting to contact me for their pipes. In that sense, I'm helping to carry on our, our, our ceremonies, our traditions. And uh, I hope that my children or someone else will also carry the Haudenosaunee pottery on. With the style of the pottery, I try to do traditional style, but um, more recently I've been doing a little bit more contemporary, kind of adding my own designs, um, kind of a combination of both. But I like to keep as close to traditional as possible. The Mohawk word for a pot describes a woman's body, it's her neck, shoulders, and belly. It's a feminine form. Um, and if you think about it, a woman is carrying life. She, she brings life into the world. And then with the comparison to the pottery, if you were holding your traditional seeds, your corn, say, it, it's carrying life. You're, the, the pot itself is holding the seeds of the future of your garden. Other artwork of Smoke Santiago's take the form of a life-bearing woman, quite literally. I actually cast pregnant women's bellies, and then I turned them into statues. It connects to our creation story, uh, with the sky woman falling, and you know, 
she was pregnant when she fell from the sky world. So there's that connection right there. I'm starting to become pretty well known for the, the bellies. Um, I actually had a opening just the other day in Bonn, in Germany. It's called On the Trail of the Iroquois. Uh, it's a big Haudenosaunee uh, Iroquois exhibit. It's really an honor to have my work in Germany. Uh, it's my work is going around the world. That's my dream, my, for my artwork to travel the world, to be well known and to teach people through my artwork. And even though I'm not going to be there, my artwork is going to put all that forward. The Haudenosaunee pottery, uh, it's basically a pinch pot bowl, and then you build up with coils for the larger pieces. I hand roll the coils after I make the bottom base, the bowl. Um, I find that you have to wait for the clay to get leather hard, and then you would build up off of that so that the clay doesn't weigh itself down. I kiln fire my pottery, uh, and then I would smoke them outside to look like they were pit fired. For the look of it, it gives it that marble look. With white pine, you'll get a lot of little lines in it. it with the cedar, you'll get um, more cloudy type of markings. Out of the fire, see the different smoke marks. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. yeah. the artist's children enjoy watching the pottery process. Wow. This is my favorite side. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. They even make works in clay themselves. I'm hoping my children will pick up on the pottery, even if it's their own style or contemporary. I think it, it's important from for the younger generations to carry on. Our, our traditions. Mountain Lake PBS is producing the Native American artistry pieces in cooperation with the New York State Historical Association's Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown, New York. This project is also a partnership with the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services. Support for Spotlight segments is provided in part by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.